Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom, and today we're going to look at another new thing from Ableton Live 12, and that is the performance pack by Ifta. It's actually really cool because, as the name suggests, it enables you to make live performance easier, but not necessarily only this. You can also use at least parts of it for your production. And we're going to start with having a look here. So we've got four Max for Life devices in here. So the first thing we're going to look at is the performer audio fact, and I'm going to drag that into the main, formerly known as master. Let's open the editor. And this is meant to enable you to create your own basically custom controller layout that mimics the layout of your actual controller. So if you have a, like a boutique MIDI controller where you don't have a control surface, then you can create the layout as you want. And so here we've got different controls that we can add simply by clicking. So there's a medium dial, a large dial, vertical slider, horizontal slider. This is a toggle button. So you can toggle something on and off on with the first press of the button with the second. You can turn it back off again. And then we've got momentary button as well. So momentary means that when you hold the button, then it'll be on. And once you let go, it's off already. So we can click edit here because currently they're overlapping. So I could take this and move this say here and you can press edit again once you've rearranged them and of course you can add whatever you like and then we can map things as well so I'm gonna put my push into the user mode and then we're gonna go into MIDI mapping mode and I can select this first one. I'm gonna be careful so I don't tap it. And then, you know, you can continue this with every single one of them. And then once you're done, you can simply leave the MIDI mapping mode and now I can control the dial this way. So let's look at the other options that you have here. First of all, you can pin this to the top, which is currently on and you can adjust the window size to your liking. I'm going to turn it back to size S. And here we've got the MIDI and CV routing. So here you've got eight CV outputs and then we can, you can select the ports. So in this case, since most likely the use case would be to send it out, I would select external out one and then like to set the particular output. I'm going to take this out again. And then you can also route the MIDI somewhere. A functions exactly like you would expect. So I could send it through my audio interface and then select a channel. You even have MPE as an option now as well. I'm going to take this out again as well because I'm, I don't actually need this. And, uh, and then as you can see, here with the CV outputs, you, you can select values for the minimum and maximum. And then we've got the macro editor, and this is where it gets more exciting because not only can you, you know, recreate your custom controller, you actually have the possibility to not only map eight different parameters to every single control you have here. So you can select the slot. So you've got normal mapping mode, CV, you can send MIDI notes, CCs, and RPN, and you can also send tempo messages this way. So there's a lot to explore what you could do, and then you could just map something. And so, for example, I could click on this, map this to the panning of track one, and then I can adjust the range here as well. And I could continue this for all the eight buttons. And there's also a quick mapping. So you turn this on and you can just, I can say like, okay, I want to control the volume of this return track and this one. And it just basically runs all the way through. I'm going to turn this off. For the first slot here that's currently selected, we can create different curves. Or you can simply draw something yourself. You can also select one of the curves here. Okay, so here we've got the possibility to adjust the grid size. So with X, the horizontal one, and with Y, the vertical one. 
Here you can turn on snap to grid, so if you want to draw your own curves, you can make them snap. If you have this on and you hold command on Mac or control on Windows, it basically reverses that. So if you have snap on, you temporarily, as long as you hold this key, the snapping is turned off. Then you can also use quantize to snap it to the set grid. And here we've got slew. So with this, you can choose non-synced in milliseconds and synced values. And then these uh, settings will slew the output of the curve in other milliseconds or beat division units. So if you turn this link button on, then the slew settings will be used for all the mappings or slots as they're called here. Then you've got sample and hold that you can turn on and off. And if you turn this on, you can set it either in Hertz, so unsynced or in synced values, the usual suspects. Another option is to phase shift. Then up top, basically what we can do, like if you, for example, want to have part of the, the mappings that you set to use the same curves, you can copy this curve and then go to second and then press paste and then you've got the same thing again and then we've got clear. Next up we've got variations which I'm personally most excited about out of the four devices in the pack because this mirrors the macro variations concept that we got in Life 11 and so you can create variations for the whole set or specific tracks. If you've been playing Life with Ableton Life for a long time, you might remember this concept from Capture, which is defunct now for a long time, or from Cliff X. So how does it work? So here we got the new button, and if I click this, it'll create a variation that can be triggered. And so I can just do this and what it currently does, because the mode is set to set, so the Life set and main would be individual tracks or groups of tracks, then if I tr trigger this, it would recreate all the settings. Currently, by default, it's not including the clips that are launched. You could include this or not, but what is included are the settings for sense, the, all the devices, and the mixer section, which is amazing. And then if I click here, I can overwrite the variation. So if I have later on realized, oh no, I actually had to lower the volume of a particular track or whatever, I can just do this, click on this again, and then it'll overwrite it with the new settings. And then if it's selected, you can also click delete. Then below here, we've got quick snapshots or one quick snapshot. So basically, this seems to be most useful. Let's say you want to go crazy for like a build up but you then want to be able to just set the parameters right back to where they were before. So you could click on stash or you can also map this. I can show you what's mappable. Then you can click on stash, do whatever you want, go crazy with all the parameters with your MIDI controller and then click recall and it'll recall the snapshot setting on the fly. Then here you can turn this on and if you do this before you create a variation, then this variation would be linked to a clip or scene that is similarly named. So I would recommend that you use the naming conventions quite precisely to not accidentally trigger another clip or scene this way. Then you've got quantize settings. If you turn this on, you can decide when this variation when it's triggered should actually be launched. So you can either set it to global or the non bars or note measures. So for example, let's say you want to start a new scene and then you want to have like different volume settings change, whatever, then it would be useful to have this set maybe to global because then it would be triggered directly with a new scene. But you might also want to have it set to none or like a small note measure that is smaller than the global quantization settings in your life set to, for example, have settings be prepared for when you want to start recording. Then here, when you click on this, this opens more or less the same as a floating window. So here on top, we have like a performer that you can pin it to the top and you have different sizes. And then here, this is up or down or overwrite and launch the currently selected variation. And those are mini mappable as well. 
I'm going to close this up again. And then last but not least, before we try it out, you can exclude certain things. And so this way it's possible to exclude either individual parameters or whole devices. So if I'm clicking on this, you can exclude parameters with the procedure I'm going to show you in a second. And if you click on here, it goes for whole devices. Let's go back here. I'm going to show you with the parameter. And then you can select this. And I'm going to click on here. And now you can see on the main track, the Spectrum's device on parameter is now excluded. And if you don't want this anymore, you can just click on this and it's gone again. Now let's do a quick demo of this. So I'm going to turn link to clip scene on. Then I'm going to create a variation. I'm going to click on this, turn this off, go back here and create a new variation. And we're going to call this pitch on with a double click and then pitch off and we're going to call this scene pitch off and the next one pitch on and now let's start this. So let's have a look at Prearranger. I'm just going to drop this in here. It's an audio effect, but you can drop it in anywhere. You could technically also put it on the main if you like, because it's just creating tracks and clips for you. If I unfold this here, you can see there are instructions. But I'm going to fold this up. And then what you need to do is just name the track that you want to record into. So I'm going to call it Carbon Strings because that's what I want to record. I'm going to click on Create Track. And then you can see that it has created two tracks. A MIDI track that's called Two Carbon Strings and then an audio track called Carbon Strings. The first one is simply for having the clips that help to hands-free live loop to either record or place the recorded clip. And here this first one is called record. You can just double click it, record two. It should have been called record carbon strings, but there's still a little bug in there, but it still works. And then this one's called two, should have been called carbon strings or carbon strings one. And so this first MIDI clip determines from when the recording starts and how long it is. So the clip length is important as well. So if you don't want it to be just one bar long as it is set here by default, you can just extend it and then I'll record however long you want. And this determines the position where the recording is placed in your arrangement view. So I'm going to grab this and duplicate this. I'm going to leave the record MIDI clip with that length because I actually think it's a decent length to just show you. And then what we need to do is we select the input. I'm going to select the second track just because it's easy to show you this way, but it's ideal for actually recording instruments like actual acoustic or electric instruments or drum machines, synthesizers that you want to record as audio or voice and just do this without having to touch Ableton Live once playback is running. There's also the possibility to tell the tracks to be armed and disarmed by simply calling clips arm and then the track name or disarm plus a track name. But that's not necessary. It actually does that on its own, but you might want this for other reasons as well. So if you just want to have tracks armed at certain times to play something live, for example, this can be used as well. Then another thing that's important is the quantization setting for live has to be 16th notes or 32nd notes for it to properly work. And 
Let's get started. Nope, we're gonna have to start from the beginning. You can see now the track is armed. And like magic, it has recorded it at a place exactly where we wanted the audio clips. I've tried it, it actually also works with MIDI tracks that you can record in two. But for this, you actually need to manually create the track and then record MIDI into that as well automatically. So that's possible as well. And you can do this with, you know, lots and lots of tracks. So not just these two tracks or like one audio track they can record in two or one MIDI track, but like several ones. So you can basically really do hands free looping, but it works in the arrangement view mostly. But when you actually go into the session view, you can see it actually has created a little clip there as well. So that works as well. And last but not least, we've got the arrangement looper, which as the name already suggests, allows you to loop parts of the arrangement on the fly. And here we've got four loop lengths that we can set. These are the defaults. And here is the loop on and off. Normally you just have normal straight divisions, but here on the division mode, when it says simple, you can also click on it and then you've got odds. So you can have things like three quarters of a bar, or like uh, two and a half bars and so on and so forth. I'm gonna turn this off again. And at the bottom left here, we've got the quantized loop start. So you can either set it to adhere to the global setting, which in my case is one bar, or you can set your own, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna keep it at global. So what I've got here is the little demo that I made for the melt tutorial, which I'm gonna link. And I have the arrangement looper on the main track, formerly called master. And so let's just start playback. And as you can see, once the quantization that you'd set is reached, in my case, the next bar, it starts looping. And as you can see, everything in the device is MIDI mappable or key mappable. Okay, so that's the rundown for the performance pack by IFTA. I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.